today as we talk about the impact of music on the brain. Today is being celebrated as World Music Day, and so we're very excited to have this conversation with, with of course, well-known musician, Lynn Young. Uh -huh. And we're joined by Dr. Joel Cervantes, who is a neurosurgeon at Belize Healthcare Partners. Good morning and welcome. Good morning. Thanks for Good having morning. me. Thank you for having me. I feel like we need music in the background. Maybe we need to like <laughs> sing something to get us yeah, like started. You. At least I have a yeah, sticker like or something to <laughs> knock, right? But that's how it all starts, with just yeah. beating on a uh, on anything in, uh, in well, your you know the You know what's the oldest musical instrument in the world, right? The heart? No. A rock? A the human voice. Oh, the human voice. Oh. <laughs> So that, that jumps us right into our conversation. And uh, there's one thing that I always find interesting. Mm. Children, at the youngest age that we can remember them, are always inclined to listening to music and moving to a rhythm. You know, we all have that joyous moment where the baby starts to bounce when they hear music. And mm -hmm. it's so like, it yeah. shows a natural <laughs> connection. So I, I to jump right into this brain power that's happening here, Dr. Cervantes, and, and tell us a bit about uh, how the brain reacts when we hear music, play music, or just experience some kind of uh, musical moment. Okay, good morning again. Um, to start off, in the beginning it was thought by neuroscientists that only one side of the brain had involvement in music, mm -hmm. like in language um, um, and other arts. and the majority of people are right-handed, which means the left side of the brain is the dominant part of the brain. However, new scientific studies have gone demonstrating that if, generally speaking, people who have the left hemisphere that is controlling and the right side of the brain has a lot of involvement in music, it doesn't mean it's isolated. We have a bridge, mm -hmm. a tissue, that um, connects the right and the left side of the brain, and both sides of the brain are involved in music, generally speaking. Now, we divide the brain in different regions, frontal lobe, temporal lobe, parietal lobe, and occipital lobe. All of these are involved, both on the right and on the left. Mm -hmm. We also have deep structures within the brain, um, including one we call the brain stem. Even this structure, which has to do a lot with picking up the signals from hearing, is involved in, in, in being able to, to identify music and being able to respond to it. So the brain is like the computer that sets it off. However, the whole body is involved. So it's, yes, the brain, the central nervous system, but it does extend to all the tissues in the body, the fact that we can identify what is music and respond to it. This is basically how it works. Yeah. The part of the brain that is, it's called um, the limbic system, which has to do with emotions, mm -hmm. and that basically is the system with which we're going to respond to music, whether positively or negatively. Wow. So, you know, I'm thinking back of all the reactions I have hearing music. I can't imagine playing it. Nah. <laughs> Lynn, tell us, you know, yeah. we, we, we know you in many different capacities, uh, one of that being uh, a musician, sometimes behind the scenes uh, assisting and sometimes directly involved. Yeah. How much do you uh, credit music to your own successes in life? That's a good question. Um, you know, growing up, we never occurred to me that, I mean music was just, I felt like I was always playing music and maybe I don't know when I started playing music yeah. but the, the household I came from that's what we do which we, you know every Sunday my, my dad just gets on the piano and, and we, we, we just play music or listen to music or whatever. Um, so it's later in life I started noticing certain things you know, um, for example like you know when you do these um, the psychological tests and stuff to see mm -hmm. if you're A type or B type or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. I'm always right smack in the middle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and and my, my siblings also, right? Um, we're always smack in the middle of, of being the, 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 the aggressive A type people and the people that have emotional connections and stuff. And I think that has helped me tremendously in terms of interacting with people, in terms of, of being a, a, a manager and all that. So the other thing I noticed as I grew up again, all my musician, music, musician friends and stuff, they, they're, I have to say, but they're nice people, right? <laughs> <laughs> Except when they get too deep into the music. <laughs> like one of a good friend I know, Carlos, but he get, my oh. father too, you know. Um, 
a lot of people tell me, oh, he's such a nice guy, but people who um, were in his choir Careful. said, That's whoa, sort of you sing something <laughs> wrong, he takes something and throw it at you. If you play. <laughs> Frankie Reality. So, but again, it seems to have an, I noticed, it seems to have an effect on people's, I don't know, demeanor, mm -hmm. their personality, that they seem to be calmer. Um, and again, I don't have any statistics to show it, but they seem to be less criminally <laughs> inclined. Wow. Wow. Honestly, I, I'm telling you, I've seen, for example, the steel band pro um, that, that we have been involved in, mm -hmm. and um, I've seen us take, you know, kids that, that, that come from difficult neighborhoods and stuff, and they get into the steel band and they start playing and stuff, and they, they change. Their Doc, approach change. Go ahead. Doc, yeah. I was looking at some of the images that are up, and I'm looking at the left, is the left side of the brain there? Well, the left side is the one that is it's logic. Like the, flip. Yeah. the left side is was, business, right? Was the right side. Right. And, um, the right side is the one that is um, um, the arts. Yeah. Yes. Drama and the arts okay. and acting so, and so dancing, the, singing. So the right side is associated with music. Right. Correct. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but it's also um, connected to creativity. Could it possibly be that one of the things that Lynn was just talking about, which was the correlation between making better choices mm -hmm. um, and music, because that's what crime is, it it's, could be, it's bad yeah. choices, yeah. Um, has to do with that relationship? It does, because remember, like I said before, even though most um, neuroscientists talk about that in people who the left brain is dominant, which means that you're right-handed, Right means that the right side of their brain is more the philosophical, romantic, creative. That's where the music is. Philosophy and romance. Right, like the right side of right. the brain, right? <laughs> but, but the left one, which is logic, right, keeps you in check. That is the business part of the brain, and that one says, "Hey, hey don't go overboard." So when we talk about crime. I mean, it all depends what the person's mm. environment is. Yeah. Another thing. Music, generally speaking, is positive, but there are some types of music that have very negative effects on the brain. Yeah, I, I was going to say that too. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I'm glad you said that because I noticed that too. Yeah. That it, it seems to depend too on the type of music that you, you do, and yeah. and again, this is not scientific, but you think back to the old movies we see about people going to war and stuff. What they do? They, they play music, right? All these. Um, stories of war and stuff, you know, back then you had this chung, chung, or whether it's if, if, if it's tribes and stuff, yeah. I know it's not politically correct to talk about mm. us black people in, in tribes and war in Africa, but again, it's, it's the drumming and the beats. Yeah. And, uh, and you look at original people, there are different types of music for different things. There's music for war, there's music for love, there's music for relaxation. Yeah. My poor that. right and left brain right now have so many questions, but uh, <laughs> let, let me start with the first one. One of the common thoughts uh, that we, we tend to have is that you're either a right brain person or a left brain person. It, it just seems to be that we're wired that way. And it was interesting when Lynn spoke of personality tests, and there are many things that you can do to help to figure that out. Is it, and then we have the very common misconception that we only use 10% of our brain, but it, it's more than that, right? It depends, yeah. that's person to person. <laughs> but but let, I'll just take a pin here. Yes, let's be careful. Uh -huh. It's not that if you are dominant, your left brain is dominant because you're right-handed, yeah. that only the left brain is working. Yeah. That's a misconception. Yeah. Both mm -hmm. sides are working. Mm -hmm. and we, we have to have a balance. Yeah. Otherwise, I would turn around and, and steal Mr. Lin's um, watch but I know there's something that tells me that that's wrong, yeah. right? So both sides of the brain, they do communicate. Mm. They have to communicate, yeah. um, not only music, but in every single thing that we do in every moment of the day. For example, mm. I write with my right hand and I kick a ball with my left foot, which tells you that both sides have to interact. If and when I do surgery, even though I write with the right hand and I don't write with the left, this one, my left hand is equally, um, able to operate the way the right one is. Mm. So, so both ambidextrous? sides of I'm ambidextrous to operate. Okay. To operate mm. when I'm operating a patient. So the question I was getting at was understand I understand what you're saying that both sides are functioning but one is dominant. Um, and for a person who perhaps is is more logically inclined, if they get involved in music, is it 
activating a new part of their brain or is it bring it I mean like I use the example of children is it reactivating yes the very very important question the two parts of the brain that most interact when it comes to music the frontal lobe and the temporal lobes and it is very important for example example in children that have been found with autism the temporal lobe has a lot of involvement in it mm -hmm. and they've done tests to see that if certain types of music can influence as though it were therapy in musicians like Mr. Lin for example um, there are two concepts that are handled if you know a beat already even if you're not reading a music sheet musicians like Mr. Lin I would not be able to not a musician right um, are able to because they have in the frontal lobe and the lateral aspect of the frontal lobe they have that capacity it's learned in fact they call it it's it's over learned and if you ask them to play music spontaneous or whatever arises it shifts from the lateral part of the brain in the front more a little bit to the middle mm. interesting and they know this because they've asked musicians all right let's do this you know um, you'll be playing music or you'll be listening to 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 a tune or something and they hook them up in a machine whether it is one with wires to see electrical activity on the surface of the brain or MRI studies that are called functional MRIs whereby they're doing an MRI an imaging picture of the brain while they kind of like uh, put the juice inside of you to see what areas of the brain light up so it, it's, it's very amazing and a lot is being learned every single day there's a lot there are a lot of studies about music and the there brain. are a lot of studies and then going to the point that Lynn just mentioned about types of music um, you know in 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 some areas when they study violence uh, sometimes people place blame on yeah. the type of music that people are listening to so in other words if I keep on hearing a particular genre of music that talks about killing beating or uh, or, or causing a, a riot versus let's use the extreme example of your spa music that's just <laughs> yeah. you know lulls you to sleep yeah. is there a difference in how we react to it there is a difference because basically music is a is is a form of education Mm. So repetition makes perfect. So if the music is negative, we're going to have negative mm. feelings. Mm. And you're right. And we're not, we don't want to be stereotyped. Usually we think about people, um, certain genres of music. We kind of look at, all right, people who more come from a poor part of an environment or a city or, or a part of society. And generally speaking, we like to discriminate and say those are the ones that are more prone to... Um, to, to, to having a negative type of a lifestyle, more like towards criminality. Let's be very careful. Mm -hmm. um, young people, and this is being seen in the US and Canada and in Europe, and I'm seeing a little bit of it here in Belize already, in more like well-to-do kids, certain types of music that conventionally have been okay. The mix and the way it is applied to the brain with the volume, the intensity, um, the time of exposure, it, it makes the brain react as though you were high on cocaine or marijuana or amphetamines. Mm. And so now kids are getting really high on music, but that high is being destructive to certain areas of the brain, ca wait, causing wait, wait. irreversible damage on a long-term basis. You, you gotta break wow. that down. So is it the, the loudness <laughs> and intensity, or is it the messaging? What are we talking yeah, about here? It's yeah. the combination, it's everything. Wow. And even certain certain neuroscientists have gone for oh. And of course, it's not the neuroscientists alone. They work with the experts in music, right? These are very serious mm -hmm. studies. We don't have this going on in Belize. But they actually work together, and they're showing that certain types, certain combinations of music are causing discrepancies in, in the normal way of thinking of young people especially. Are we, are we mixing the baby and the bath, and bath water together? <laughs> because I... How are you defining music? Because is music simply what is coming from the instruments, or are you talking about the lyrics? Because I, I don't see the difference between, and I'm asking you for your opinion on it, but I don't see the difference between um, people playing a guitar, uh, whether or not it's in a rock and roll style, mm -hmm. or somebody playing the violin. It's what you put, it's the value added on it to me that would somehow cause some of these negative things that you're saying. Music itself is neutral it's liquid can, right? can, can i jump in here and tell you something right? right is it neutral yes and no yeah you can have uh, bad values uh, no 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 not not, not bad values. again from, from a non-scientific point of view right and again from a musician's point of view i find music in a sense is just an extension i told you the oldest instrument is the human voice right mm -hmm. it's an extension really of us producing sound right so i can tell you something in a tone 
that conveys, I can say the same word in a different tone, and it conveys a different meaning to you, yes. right? Yeah. So, we it's can the have same an example. Let's do an example here. Let's tell you stop in different ways and see yeah. which one has more impact. So, when I say stop, it's stop it, right? I say stop it, right? It conveys a different meaning to you because of the tone. Music I have from is the same way, right? And you might not realize it, but I can play some cards on the piano that will make you start feeling sad. Hmm. And we do it as musicians. We can manipulate the audience's mood. mood. And, and that's why jazz especially, we talk about moods, jazz and moods. And, and that's then, why right? shows are set up in a particular way. Precisely. It's like highs and lows. And, and, you can, and so what I'm trying to say is that the best music are, are, are songs are the ones where the words and the music match. There's a, there's a song that I really love that's called Desafinado. It means slight, it's a Brazilian tune, slightly out of tune, very deep music, right? But the cards and the notes in it um, are always slightly off, and it sounds exactly what the song is saying, which is telling a girl, listen, you're slightly out of <laughs> you, we're not connecting musically. We're not connecting love-wise, right? Oh a lot of music are like that. And, and I find, like, Bob Marley's music, a lot of his music, Makes his style, pressure. and the cards that he chooses reflects what he's saying in his music. But so I think what Doc is, so what, coming back to what you're saying, it's not just the words. The words is part of it. But, but if I put nice, beautiful words to... to, to music that is ominous and threatening it doesn't match it doesn't feel correct hmm. okay, but, but that's why we have makobe music that's yeah. why sad music yeah, yeah there's we're a called style to and yeah. cards that you choose yeah. and, and, and scares that you choose for those kind of music there is there is though some association um, yeah between for example even if and i'm trying to just simply yeah. separate just music not lyrics or yeah. association that's why i say lyrics and so, music call it out Creating human so, emotion. So, example of Bob Marley. What, yeah. what, what, what the association is partly because of the tempo, not necessarily only because of the music yeah. itself. But, but it's, it's, the, it's the beat. But it's spacing. all part of it, boy. It's, it's a combination. Part of it. It's a combination. If you have the wrong so, tempo, f again, if you have the wrong tempo for the kind of music, take um, war. It's a war. You know, even if you don't understand the words, you get the yeah. feeling. And the People who don't understand built. English yeah. hear that, and that's they true. take this. They have the same reaction as you and I. They have the same reaction even though they don't understand the words. Yeah. If you understand the words, it's even more powerful. So, it, and, and if you play that fast, dum 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 because in the brain, we not only have these structures for it to function, the brain functions with like electricity. And I'm gonna use the word juices. Scientifically speaking, we talk about hormones, neuromodulators, neurotransmitters, fancy words. I break it down into juices. Mango juice, tambran juice, <laughs> lime juice, orange juice, in different proportions. And okay. these juices, yeah. and we talk, they're chemicals. Mm -hmm. And music influences the proportion, mm. how much we have, and it goes variating as we go listening to music. They've also done tests, hooking up an individual, yeah. taking blood tests, and depending on, and, and I, I don't have the correct words as in tempo and yeah. whatever. I'm not a musician, right? But they, they monitor moves based on the sound. Right, yeah. there are the differences in the juices yeah. in the brain. Yeah and how mm -hmm. the individual is responding. And yes, words also, at the end of the day, they do have a role um, mm -hmm. added to music. It does. You know, I think this is just so fast. But we see it in our everyday lives. We prefer to run to certain music. We prefer sure. to relax to certain music. We prefer to drive. I mean, mm -hmm. it might, you know your road rage when it's like a really angry song. <laughs> oh, yeah. But um, it even, I find, and, and this is perhaps one you can touch on, you know, you know when you have to lower the, the music so you can focus on a yeah. thought? Because I always think that means the music is, is already occupying another part of my brain that I have to <laughs> shut off. So it shows there's some kind of brain activity. But going back to some of the studies, you know, it's been proven that certain types of music played to children can help their learning capacity at a very age, young age, sometimes even when they're, when they're in their mo mother's belly. Can we talk a bit about that? Of course, because 
um, or organs in, in the human body that you're forming between in pregnancy and yeah. a woman, by week eight, we basically have all the organs in place. By week 12, we don't form anything else new wow. within our mother's womb. After 12 weeks of pregnancy, basically, it's just the size and the maturity of the organ. So from a very early stage, kids in the womb will pick up just the humming of their mother, hmm. the heartbeat of their mother. That's the first, I think, introduction to music, their mm -hmm. mother's heartbeat. I was right, so, Right, yeah. so their mom... <laughs> See, so you're their a mom is, Right, their mom is altered. I mean, she's running because somebody's trying to, yeah. I don't know, stab her, kick her. Obviously, it's not something nice for the child. Plus, the juices who I talked okay. about, the hormones, the neurotransmitters, neuromodulators, they do pass the umbilical cord, right, to the child. And whatever alterations the mom has with these juices, it's going to affect the child and it's going to affect the environment that they are in. So it can have a negative effect in a child who is not as yet born in the womb. So, okay. Or a positive effect. Or a positive effect, is, of course. Is it, is it possible that music can somehow assist in the brain development? Or it, it definitely does. I'm talking about even after, you said after eight weeks, there's nothing new. No, well, no, well, no, no, no new formation no new of formation. new organs. Oh, okay. It just goes growing in size and maturing for a future function. But the brain is very plastic. And at first we thought that brain plasticity or neuroplasticity was only in kids. In fact, even at older ages... Plasticity, at, what is that? Um, well, the capacity for, of the brain to be very flexible. I don't mean flexible as in softness. The flexibility to respond to all the stimulus or stimuli around it and to take it in hopefully positively and not negatively, right? So the, the brain plasticity to be able to accommodate to different environments and stimuluses and things we didn't expect or things we expect is what makes us go growing as an individual. And this is the same thing with music. So definitely music will help a child if it's positive music to grow in an appropriate fashion but also in individuals I have dealt a lot with people who are in hospital environments and in intensive care unit and perhaps in a coma whether from an accident or whatever injury or an induced coma as a team of doctors you you put them in medical coma medications to try to rest the brain because of whatever condition and I have found that and this is empirical from my perspective, but I've also seen studies with other colleagues from outside, whereby you let the relative bring music. What type of music do they like to listen to? Oh, um, mm. they like gospel music. Bring it, please. Mm. And that helps recoveries in a much better fashion. It's faster. There's a better possibility of recovery than um, a person who's just isolated to silence. Is it, is it true that the same development that you get from um, learning to play music is the same that you get when you learn a second language? Basically because it's there's similar areas of the brain that are being stimulated. Uh -huh. wow. Yes. I've also heard of the discipline that comes. Uh, yeah. you, learn, you learn discipline from a younger age when you start uh, learning to play an instrument, for example, or yeah. reading music. Yeah, it, it, yeah that's true. Um, and I don't know if it's necessarily just the music itself, but the realization that to be good at it, you have to be disciplined. Um, right, um, and I think it's the same. That part of it, I think, is similar to sports. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you start doing something because you, you love it, and then to get better at it, you gotta do the work. Yeah, but then you like doing the work. You, well, you put in the work, and you don't mind putting in the work when it's, you know, like me, I'm a basketballer. I used to be, but then I, my knees kind of get messed up. I can't play ball now, so the doctor tell me about start riding bike or, or, or whatever else. It's so boring, right? It's hard <laughs> for me to do, right? As compared to basketball. You need good music. <laughs> I, that's what I, I put on some music. But, but the point is, you know, when you're doing something that you like, you, you, you are stimulated to put in a discipline. Yeah. And I think it, it, it trains you to I don't know how to explain it, but to, to, to understand that to be good at something, you got to work yeah. at it. It, it, it that does that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and I don't think it's only yeah. music that does that. I think sports, I think Bart might tell you also about yeah. basketball, Which what basketball has done for us in the sense right. that, you know, the competition and everything else. And, you know, if you don't put in your work, yeah. you, you, you're going to look bad. <laughs> but what, what Mr. Young is yeah. saying makes all the sense. The areas of the brain that are um, there, for repetitive, in this case, music, sounds, rhythms, and the areas of the brain that are open to anything new, and they react differently, but they interact. 
yeah. they do interact. So then this one says, all right, this is what I've learned or over learned, but there's something new. So I'm going to pipe it down to allow this other area of the brain to like raise, you know, their 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 um, their capacity. They compensate. Let me ask this because we're going into summer. Parents will hear this and say, okay, now I gotta get my kids in music school. <laughs> they should. Uh, <laughs> but then yeah. you always have the, the, the kids who really hate it. They don't wanna do it. They don't wanna uh, go back to violin lessons, for example, for a long time. Is it a natural inclination for some or in, in the opposite, an aversion for some? That's correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Generally speaking, generally speaking, most kids are going to like music, but for some kids, there's another interest. They want to do swimming. They want to do karate. They like the physical activity more. Right. Exactly. Okay. Everybody is different. We're, we're wired differently. Yeah. Look, look at it from the other standpoint too, because we're not only talking about, to my mind, creating music, but it's also listening to music. Mm -hmm. As a parent, should I be concerned that my son or daughter is listening to a particular kind of music as opposed to another kind of music? Well, all because depends. that's what it, what you're telling us is that this affects personality and it might have a negative impact. It, it does. So should I be in my uh, daughter's <laughs> iTunes list and saying you're not listening to Pantera, you're not listening to uh, Frankie Reno, you're not <laughs> listening to. <laughs> Jeez, uh, Should I go that far? I wouldn't say that for Frankie right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying, I'm trying to balance it out. Yeah. <laughs> Let I me was. suggest, I mean, as a parent, and, and my experience growing up, um, make sure they're listening to a wide variety of music. But if they don't like a wide variety of music? Yeah, they won't. You know what? My father used to sit me down to listen to classical music on Sundays. And me and my brother used to hate it. Boring back and stuff. And we used to be, everyone get out there and play, right? And we used to, he used to have us from an early age sitting, listening to classical music. And it's later in life we, we, we started to understand the music and love it. And uh, starting to recognize that it created a balance between the pop music we were listening to and deeper uh, music that, that, you know. So, and I do the same with my kids. Um, growing up, I don't stop them from listening to any kind of music they want to listen to, right? But most of the time they're in my car or at home or stuff. I'm playing jazz or classical music or stuff like that, and they get to like it. And my father told me something long ago. He said, what you hear is, what you hear a lot, you get to like. Mm. And, and that's true because- He said, what you hear a lot, you get to like. It's called conditioning. For example, I noticed that my kids kind of, they all know, they all know my moods and they've identified lines of music. They know when I love to listen to Bob Marley yeah. and certain you know, types of music or like Scorpions. Um, they know what mood I'm in. They know when it's classical. And what I've noticed now is that um, you know, my sons and, and my daughters, they've done the same thing. Not on my music, but there are certain things that my son would say, for example, I have an exam that I have to listen to this song. And it's the yeah. same song I listen yeah. to before I go for an exam. The last thing before I go out the door. <laughs> yeah. Right? And I notice he's listening to the same thing. He puts a V and Dad, I want to come and listen to this. Yeah. Um, sometimes music I haven't heard and I, I would like it. So, you know, you get introduced, it's called conditioning. Yeah. Wow. So, so, so I think what Doc was talking about music being negative, I think if you take it to broader life experience, right? Um, you cannot avoid people from being exposed to negativity. But if they have a contrast, Mm -hmm. If they have a contrast, they can see for themselves that, you know what? My preference this is This is here. negative. Yeah. And this is, even if they, I'm not, they might even pre still prefer the negativi negativity, you know, but in life, in general, right, if you are exposed to positive stuff and negative stuff, you as a person can see the difference and you can make a better choice. But if you always expose just to negativity, negativity, then that becomes, that's become your way of life. So this leads me to the point, and while Kevin is still trying to digest that music can have <laughs> negative impacts, I, I believe you. <laughs> is there any type of music that's just really good for our brains, that if you could tell people, you know, take some time and perhaps indulge a little bit into this type of music because it maybe lights up certain neural paths that are good? Okay, from a scientific point of view, classical music, um, new age music, which is you know basically piano songs of nature type of music, bossa nova, especially Why? the Brazilian type, um, because the limbic system has different <laughs> areas and certain areas are for anger, for rage, um, negative emotions, and certain types of music are going to activate certain parts of this system. It's all over the brain, mm -hmm. and other music that the lighter will more Duff. focus on positive emotions. Duff. 
Uh huh. Go ahead. <laughs> if I were to say that that's a very white Eurocentric <laughs> study, that base that you based your answer on, would I be wrong? Has there been any study on what Paranda does for neuro um, activity? Has there been any study done on what any other form of music, um, you know, um, what you call it, uh, like cultural music? Has there been any study based on that, and has been well, compared to what these very European gentlemen have done in terms of um, classical music? Okay, well, well, let me just clarify. Bossa Nova music, Brazilian, Brazilian music, is, is very Afro. black influence. It's yes, Afro, yes, right. It's Afro-Brazilian music mm -hmm. called Bossa Nova, and I love it. Yes. Whether it's instrumental or it has words. But have there been any studies um, in relation to? Well, of to course. Now they're venturing into different lines of music, and reggae is one of them. Yeah. Right, not reggaeton. And results right? from those studies dance are. Hall. Um, positive. I mean, Bob Marley's music is not viewed as negative. No, Paranda, I have not read anything. Yeah, but that's, um, that's but that isolated would be to that this is region. That would have music, to be something right? done in this region. Yeah, but, yeah. Kevin, I mean, you can argue as much yeah. as you want. It's Eurocentric. This is this is research that's been before. around for years. Hey, and be in careful, fact, I've heard and I find it a bit yeah. insulting because. To but me, let's be careful, right? To me, to me, a lot of these things are based on a view that some of these instruments, the violin is superior to the, to the drums or it's more superior to some other, to the flute. Mm. And it comes with a bias. I mean, music, like everything else, if you take put scientists together and you give them money to do research, they will, their, their bias will leak into what they are, what they're exposed to. So if I'm exposed, do you see that? That's being human, what, right? Yes, exactly. You, you <laughs> told us that, or I think you did, yeah. that hearing something repeatedly makes you like it. So if I'm doing a study about what you should listen to, it's going to leak a little bit in how much it does because some people are professional. It could be it's here or there, but surely the study is influenced by Pro bias. Proper scientific studies, proper scientific studies, should. The, the people who are doing the studies are supposed to have no bias. They even, they've been signing a document and to. saying that and they, they don't lean do towards control. a product. Right. No, I, I got to disagree with you here. I think, I think we're taking a tone where it's a bit too cynical. And I, I definitely encourage you to approach one of the universities to use solo, <laughs> solo, Afro-centric music to, to, to do yeah. the difference. This yeah, but, is. But, but I, I want to stick a pin, though, because it's I don't like this thought about Eurocentric and Afrocentric. Yes, it is. that's the world today. But if you go back into the history of music, um, it's, all, it, it, it's all coming from human emotions and human feelings and stuff. And the environment that you grow up in, that you're in, is going to influence what kind of music you like as well as the, in, the music influencing you, right? Um, I think if you're in an environment where you have to really fight for a living and, 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 and have to be aggressive, etc., you're going to gravitate towards aggressive music. You're going to go, and, and maybe Doc spoke about us, you know, talking about certain kind of people like certain kind of music. For me, it's kind of natural, right? Um, a lot of Bob Marley's music resonates around the third world because it's music, it's revolutionary. It's a music about surviving, right? It's music about beating the odds. It's music about, hey, stand up and- The lyrics. Yeah, not only the lyrics, the, the music itself hits that tone. How does the music? Itself, the type way. of cards he used, the way he used, he presents his music, it does, right? I, I, I have to get deep into music, for example. I mean, certain cards, augmented cards, make you feel happier. Diminished cards make you feel sadder. You know, um, different scales could make you feel more. So, the point I'm making is that the, the, the kind of music, what you're talking about there, people who are well off and doing well, right? They will listen to this kind of music as more of from an interesting point of view, but they are in a different circumstances and a different type of music will appeal to them. I, 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 that's what I have. But so, is it mood yeah. that influences musical choices or musical choices that influence mood? I think goes both ways. Both ways. And I want to say something. I think, but but the, 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 the critique about um, it being. Uh, but even, but even coming back to the guy from the music, right? They have different beats and I music for every occasion. Yeah. Your, 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 your and so does European music, by the way. And that is okay? the point. The European music, there's music for 
uh, uh, yeah. Saturday, I mean, you go into church and you listen to some of those old hymns, are beautiful, yeah. but that gives you a different feeling. Lynn, the, 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 the critique was not necessarily with the music. Mm -hmm. The critique was with the study and the angle of the study. Yeah, well, they use anyway, what they have. Well, well, hopefully, Dr. hopefully Dr. with this talk, somebody yeah. who has the yeah. money to sponsor. Kevin that's that's for sure, headed. right? I would, I'll fund it, no? I would, yeah. I would definitely say, why not? Why not? No, we don't need to study. Music, we know right? it. We know but, Paranam music no, makes us feel good. I'm just going to say, within individual <laughs> cultures, you yeah. will have uh, music on, on, on a different range. And Absolutely. the Garifuna culture is a great one because they have specific music they only use for their dogos mm -hmm. because of the spiritual yeah. connection that they uh, want to happen at that time. So yeah. I think if you go into individual cultures, you'll find that, whether in Belize, whether in Brazil. The Mayan music is yeah. fascinating too for me. Yeah. yeah. The, the yeah. use of, of, of cards and scales and stuff, I find it very interesting. Yeah. Um, I, I find it personally very interesting. No, you might find it boring sometimes. But if you understand what the music is doing to you, uh, I like it. To simplify it, to simplify it, these juices I spoke about, mm -hmm. our brains have a natural inborn marijuana system. Ooh. Wow. We do. And I get arrested. It has been, no, 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 no. It has been said that How Marley <laughs> was a prophet. I kind of believe it. I, I kind of feel like he understood in, through his music and, and most like the Maya music, Paranda music, um, and other types of music the people who compose these music, I think innately they understand it. Yeah. We have a natural marijuana system in the brain. Yes. And it has to do with mood. And dopamine and all this stuff. Right? Um, yes, yes. <laughs> these strange music, chemicals music are, are called the endocannabinoid system. Music so stimulates it. That is why some people don't See. have to consume a substance. For example, I don't consume anything. I get my natural high. So what you're saying, and, and that's what you were mentioning earlier, that, that you can actually get a chemical-like reaction from music, good, right. bad, or in between. Right, definitely. Hmm. Fascinating. Tell us about some of the other interesting uh, scientific facts about music and brain interactions that you found. Um, well, we're using it from a medical perspective. It's being used, like for example, in patients that have Alzheimer's, a form of dementia. Uh, Parkinson's disease, even in, in neuropsychiatric conditions like schizophrenia, mm -hmm. um, in depression, in, in um, anxiety, um, autism, which is, you know, a lot of kids are being now diagnosed with autistic conditions. And there's a lot of controversy there if it, it, if it is, it, it will work, it won't work. And I think it's the types of music that mm -hmm. as yet have to be explored from a scientific point of view. I really wish UB and or Galen would have the resources to pick up some sure. type of um, investigation Belizean. in this time. I mean, yeah. our music, our Belizean music, sure. yeah. it would be great. Sure. Yeah. Can you talk about, let me be, um, in your opinion, what we're missing out in not having this almost mandatory. You have English, math, and to me, there should be music somewhere there hmm. um, in our school system. Yeah, my father is a very strong believer in that, <laughs> right? But yeah. music at an early age, you know, um, really helps your, your, your development. And I, I, yes, I agree that I think it should be compulsory up to a certain level. Um, but, you know, that, that's something that all around the world has been a challenge, but there are a lot of countries that, that push uh, music as you know, in early, early music education, they see it as very important. And what do you think yeah. has been the block between us not recognizing the benefits, the intangible benefits um, of having it as a mandatory part of our system? I'm mean, beginning to something bigger here because in Belize, you know, we, we spoke up earlier before the show started, we are an undeveloped country, so to speak, right? Although I have a different view because no country started developed. You know, I mean, we saw the old American movies with Indian and and and, and everybody walking around with a six shooter shooting up each other, right? So, yeah. uh, and then we're looking at gang warfare in Belize, and I'm saying, okay, so what's the thing? We read about old England where they were where they um, they were jousting and chopping off people's head, and it was chivalry, you know. But they were doing the same thing that the kids here in Belize is doing, except that they have different arms, right? So countries go through different stages, and then you have priorities that you have to deal with, and another country that that doesn't have as much money as we would want to do, right? Governments, and put aside corruption that some money doesn't go the right place, the governments have challenges of where they're going to put their money, we as a country. So music, I find, has always in countries like us been left to people to just develop, and then when it starts to become big, then like Brazil, Jamaica, Trinidad, see music as a national treasure. Yeah. And then they start, Cuba especially, they start putting in 
government resources. But at the end of the day, politicians and governments react to what the people want. Mm -hmm. But music is cheap. <laughs> it's cheap. Not necessarily Not in time music when you education. think of what they're fitting in with the yeah. curriculum. But I think you, what you're saying, though, if you have to pay a music teacher or pay an English teacher, they're going to pay the English teacher before a music teacher. This is, and then you have also other forms of art that people are still clamoring for yeah. as well. And I still maintain so that we have to the keep country. these things within the curriculum. But I, I got to say this because it would be unfair to not mention it. We're getting there because oh, yeah. SJC has their music program, yeah. and I think that's one yeah. of the things Wesley. that we can that's continuously. Wesley, Grace um, Primary. Grace Primary is the best. Um, no, no, I mean the, 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 you degree degree program, primary. <laughs> the degree program at the sixth form, which yeah. is which is Yeah, really UB is working on yeah. trying to put the music program in place also. So we can yeah. all agree that music can have a great impact on our quality of life in a positive way. Um, and, and I think that this is uh, on a day like today where we're talking about World Music Day. Um, it is really refreshing to kind of put some science behind what we yeah. feel we already knew already. Lynn, for you, uh, mm -hmm. how much have you given this thought about what is scientifically founded about this love that you have for music? Um, I have uh, I'm, I've always been interested in how music affects people. Mm -hmm. And I read the science about it, but I am more interested from a composer arranging point of view. Yeah. So like I do a lot of arrangements for the steel band and I use certain chords and scales and stuff to try to get my music. I would sit down and listen to Garfield music for ages to see how people react to it and try to figure out what is the what is the driving force for this reaction and I, I do that. Yeah. It's not scientific for me, but I do it. I watch people's reaction to certain types of cars and scales, certain rhythms and things like that. And, I, and I've seen it. So what have you and found so anecdotally so music. far with our Belizean music about what, I mean, it's like punta naturally moves your hips. It reflects us. Whether you're good at it or not. <laughs> <laughs> our Belizean music is, is very reflective of who we are. Uh -huh. We are very diverse population. We like, I, I mean, Belizeans, we listen to just about anything. Yeah. Um, we gravitate towards, the, and, I have to be careful here, but we are a bit of a promiscuous society, and Caribbean in general, right? Okay. And um, so the world. <laughs> well, don't put that on us, Caribbean people. Uh, everybody. <laughs> well, we are more open with it, maybe, okay. right? And, and 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 we don't have a problem displaying our sexuality, um, and we do true music a lot, right? Music is music and. Uh, Love and sex is, is very intertwined. So a lot of the, the, the music that we really love, the Calypso and the Punta and stuff, you know, uh, like um, one European once told me about Punta. Um, she said that's a vertical intention. <laughs> Sorry, a horizontal intention in a vertical motion. <laughs> so that part of it. But at the same time, like you said, the paranda, nice, calming, yeah. make you feel it, it, it so so I find Paranda is very community bonding yeah. kind of music yeah people listening to Paranda together it's kind of like yeah but you're my brother right we're cool but I mean so moving away from Garifuna culture the samba is considered a, a, fer a fertility dance uh, yeah, traditionally it is a, it yeah. is a fertility dance and uh, even the way yeah. it is danced yeah. while it may not be as sexy as Punta well, yeah. I guess depending on, on who you talk Ms. Myrna would no Ms. Myrna would argue with you there but um, um, I think that's that's kind of yeah. what we're used to. The, the and, then rhythm music, and then in Mayan music, I find very reflective of their yeah. way of life. If you really watch the, the Mayan villages and how people move about and stuff, and you listen to their music, it is very reflective of their way of life. To me, mm -hmm. I see it right. Yeah. And again, I don't see music necessarily as just notes and stuff. See I see it as how people react, that's how so. people move. I see it as a reflection of who you are. Yeah. Can, I, can I ask this yeah. question for me? Which is, yeah. music is something powerful. I mean, even from a biblical standpoint the devil was associated with the he was the boss of music he was the minister of music in heaven he was yes and he kicked you um, and so music has always been as you said an extension of our consciousness and of our oh, yeah. spiritual views but I wanted to link that back to another fact mm -hmm. which is that you're speaking about the steel pan mm -hmm. and the steel pan is the last instrument I believe to be invented in the last how many years yeah if you don't include synthesizers and stuff but, but yeah yeah um, is it, is it that music is so vast that we, you know, will never get to completely untap everything that is to be had about music? We can't even create more instruments to create more songs. 
But first of all, and again, I I did physics, right? Oh. So you can make music from anything, right? I mean, nothing in this. It gives off certain vibrations. Yeah. And, and if the vibrations are, are, are enhancing a feature, you get a, a, a nice tone, right? If they're just crazy, you get a different tone. So you can make music out of anything. It's just a question of what kind of, the timbre we call it, right? What kind of song you yeah. get out of different things, right? So I don't know, I don't know the, the sense of it, but there's maybe our bodies have natural vibrations too. Yeah. That, that, that some, you know, some wavelengths and stuff seem to, 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 yeah. to hit us, but, you know, when I knock this, there's so many different vibrations coming off. If you analyze it in a spectroscope, in, in, in a scope, you'll see what are the strong ones and what are the weak ones. And strangely enough, some are subsonic. And it's been proven... Subsonic? Yeah, you don't... You can't recognize it here, but you can feel it. Yeah. So like a bass note, if I go in technically on a computer, which I've done, and take out the subsonic um, frequencies. And just the low. The, the note is still the same note, but the feeling is different. Huh? Yeah. And the bass would be the low, the yeah, lowest. Yeah, the yeah, lowest. Yeah. yeah. And the same thing happens with high frequencies, right? I'm trying to make right? sure this is a conversation. They say the high frequencies. There's a <laughs> people will understand. There's a frequency <laughs> range. <laughs> there's a frequency range that the scientists say you can hear, but you go above the, the yeah. supersonic. The, the, the frequencies that are above your hearing range, dogs can hear it, for example, I and you can feel it. Yeah. Feel you can it. feel it, yeah. You know, I don't, I don't think you want to hear with your ear. You, 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 your body reacts to yeah. to all the vibrations. I've always, yeah, that one with the dog. Am I right? <laughs> right. Yeah. But I, we missed an important slide, and I think this is one that ever, the general public will really appreciate, yeah. which was the the link to music and our memories. Mm. Um, and you had mentioned that there's some research with uh, with uh, Alzheimer's, there's some work going on with Alzheimer's, but it is true sometimes when you hear a song and it just takes you back to a I place know, yeah. and a feeling. It's like we all have songs that are part of the soundtrack of our lives yeah. um, and, and they may take us back to one particular feeling. W what is the connection there? Doc? There is a connection on an evolutionary scale. The last thing that a person with dementia is going to lose is the ability to identify music, their favorite songs. Wow. So <coughs> that person, your family member, may no longer recognize the son, the daughter, the husband, but let us say they go to a church and there are hymns that they, they hum or they sing, uh, and you start to sing hum it or play it on a radio, um, and they will start to sing it. They can be totally isolated from the world, in that world by themselves. That's the last thing that is going to shut off, and that is a very important connection. Uh, predominantly in the temporal lobe, the frontal lobe has something to do with it also, but that's the last area that's going to shut off. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I guess music is like something very sacred to the brain from an evolutionary perspective. Spiritual. Yeah. Spiritual. And we also saw that there's sometimes music that's good to, for, to help children study or help people concentrate. Yeah? I have to be careful because I, well, no, you can say it. Uh, uh, I'm answering too white, but, but the problem is that the You're studies have been done more and if I have to say the white music, right? No, no, they're doing studies on other music. Right? Yeah. But, but it's, it's we'll preliminary, yeah. right? Yeah. So I can't come and say about um, other music that there's no results. You can only speak of the research right, that exists. Right. exists yes. right. And I'm not doing the research. I read up on it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You know? Kevin <laughs> just likes to be an antagonizer. <laughs> you know that. Yeah. But it's fine. It's fine. But tell us about it, though. Because if it can help, if I have a child that perhaps, you know, if, if it will help them study, if it will help them complete their homework, it can be well, useful. Well, I'm not, a, I'm not a musician, right? Yeah. And, and I'm not a psychologist within the field of, of music. There, yeah. there actually are psychologists who use music, right? Cool. But what I can tell you is that music that is like a very boom boom very loud and I don't know what the word is that tone <laughs> aggressive. Tempo, whatever. It's, it's aggressive then right <laughs> like, like a faster like a, tempo right um, and it is very loud and like slamming I'm going to use the word slamming right um, like yeah like war you said you know like yeah. that thump, 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 thump. yeah that's generally speaking not good for children and of course music that has words that can have negative effects so you mean like if they're words. listening to the electronic music it's just like boom 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 yes okay but what do you want them to listen to when they're studying though that's the mozart and the, the classical music well it all depends some people know music and some people softer music and i leave softer music for people to define <laughs> usually it's non-verbal music just you know um instrumental music basically would be the best choice. Okay. Hmm. Yeah.
Any more questions for you, Kevin? No, I mean, I just find it very fascinating. And Kevin, I think that you, you guys will be leading this study together. <laughs> uh, no, I don't. That's where you're <laughs> I don't. Well, I, I can tell you that I can see from this Mr. Young would be a good lecturer for the psychology also of music. He's yeah. a born psychologist. Yeah. No, <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I just picked it up right now. I'm like, wow. <laughs> I just like just reading about stuff, everything. I just, I just, I mean, yeah. sometimes, you know, we can be critical of yeah. our society. But there's a correlation between poverty and, you know, or development. And I think that we need to put in these crutches. And I think music is a crutch. I, I was at Grace Primary School, that's why I have that bias. I can remember Slower Ares putting together a band um, which was simply comb, greater, mm -hmm. and we took bottles of different levels. And as you said, Doc, and these are things which are etched in, in, in my memory, even in terms of the way I relax, because I remember when we were studying for um, BNSC, as it was in those days, we'd go in there and jam for an hour. And I, who uh, was not necessarily the best student, did a lot better in BNSC. I don't mm -hmm. know if you, that was the relationship or the quality of Miss Gloria Edwards, but surely there's a value to music which we as a society are not using. Mm -hmm. And I think you're right, because if you look at a society like the US, mm -hmm. um, like young people, and I want to use the word streets, right? Don't get me wrong, though. Um, if they have a beef, let's use that word, right? <clears throat> there could be a dance off. In my group, I could dance better than you, or rap, if I rap better than you. And what the, whatever the crowd applauds to. In yeah. Belize, I mean, yeah. we have so much talent for music. A lot of the young guys and even girls who are dying from gun violence. How many very gifted musicians, you know, it. we've yeah. lost there, you know, among other types of careers that they could have. But, well, he's yeah. the expert in that. But that's just my empirical observation. I agree, yeah. So, so I have a question here. Uh, is there something as listening to too much music? Everything in excess is bad, yes. That's true. Well, no extremes. That's not answer on me, no. <laughs> <laughs> I just. Do you listen to music all day, every day? Or you just um, naturally have a, you have a song playing in your head? Right music, for, for me, everything is music. Yeah. I mean, you're talking here and mm. the inflections in your voice. There's and a stuff, rhythm. It's a rhythm and mm -hmm. there's music. So I don't look at listening to music per se as listening. What I, you're I mean, saying is your pers what you call music, it's not static. It's not yeah. the background sounds yeah. or the yeah. lyrics. The other thing I, I'd say, you know, I always remember reading and this is maybe psychological. You hold a glass of water in, a, in your hand for an hour or so you start getting tired, right? Yes. You put it down and you do something else, you come back and you can hold it again, right? So yeah, to me, it's music is the same thing. If you listen to one type of music, you overstimulate the brain, you get tired, right? So mm. to me, it's not too much music, just I, I switch. A lot. I will listen to classic, I will listen to jazz, I will listen to reggae, I will listen to calypso rock. and rock. I listen to rock too. So you listen to all types of music? Yeah, because I get Do you have any guilty pleasures like you really like, <laughs> don't want anybody to hear you playing it in your car or anywhere? Um, not necessarily. I mean, people will look at you a certain way if you listen to, if you listen to a certain type of music, but I'm listening to it for different reasons, right? Okay. So I will listen to it to understand what's the catch okay. what's the hook okay. why why people like it and I try to try to put myself in that position and try to understand you know well what people like about this all time favorite song or musical piece um i have several mm -hmm. and and it comes back to what my father said what you hear what you like one of my father's pieces um and it's from the misa caribenia uh -huh. who um lamb of god it's oh. just an absolutely beautiful song that, that I that I can't get out of my system from I was a kid, right? Yeah. Um, and I find it fascinating because now my kids are the same way with it. That same, <laughs> that same song, right? I, maybe it's because of that, right? Yeah. That, um, classical-wise, I love Chopin. Mm -hmm. I, I, I keep trying to play them, but they're very difficult to write. Mm -hmm. I love Ch Chopin. Um, Jazz, I've just gotten into jazz a few years ago. You were missing out, man. I was missing out all along. <laughs> um, I love paranda music. Absolutely love paranda music. Mm -hmm. um, I like the rhythms and stuff. Yeah. I love Latin music generally. Yeah. Cuban music fascinates me. It's just so... It's just so complicated. Yeah. So, mm. Malani, can I leave yeah. without... I, I, I was going to ask him next. <laughs> what are you talking about? 
tell us your all-time favorite or you could we'll, we'll give you a choice you can give us your guilty pleasure song where <laughs> and expose yourself to um, these, or tell us your all-time favorite well, I'm, a, I'm a very positive minded person so it yeah. all depends on my mood okay um, and well maybe a little bit of apologies I grew up a lot with Bob Marley mm -hmm. um, that's practically one of my, my favorite um, artists. Of course, I, one of my favorite songs has to do with my appearance, Crazy Ballhead. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's one of my, I don't, when I hear that song, I, I will dance. It doesn't matter where I am, I, I'll start rocking and dancing. Sounds like we need to put that on so you start a dance session. I there. love to dance. Don't know to dance, but love to dance. Um, but also, um, I, I think, you know, being a Belizean and, and the influence of Garifuna music is a lot on, on me right now. Also, I, I did have a lot of interaction with the late Andy Palacios, his yeah. doctor. Yeah. And um, his, he influenced me a lot. Um, I. You know, his passing um, was my introduction to basically to Paranda music. So, um, when I hear Paranda music, I get very, very nostalgic. If you look at my yeah. appearance right now, I started to change as we're speaking. Yeah. Um, Paranda music, um, I might sound selfish to the Garifuna community, but to me, it's just Belizean. Yeah. To me, it's, I mean, I know, I know it's, a, it's a region, right? They have brothers and sisters in Guatemala and Honduras. But for me, when I hear Paranda music or Garifuna music, it's like, that's Belize. Um, but I also, there, there are a couple of. Um, I, I, I grew up in an era with uh, the heavy metal bands. Mm -hmm. Now, curiously enough, I don't like the heavy metal songs that are like the trashing and the banging. Mm -hmm. I like the ballads from the, Ooh, the heavy metal. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So uh, you know, uh, Scorpions, Wind of Change. Um, I like uh, Aerosmith. Um, all Led Zeppelin, but I like um, their what are classical ballads from them. Um, classical yeah, music, yes, I do. Classical music yeah. is, yeah. yeah, classical music, like when I have to be by myself and I'm in my own little depression and I'm, where am I going to stay, what I'm going to do now. Yeah. And of late, um, I had a little introduction to Bossa Nova a couple years back. Um, and I said, from Bossa Nova, I went to rhythm and blues and jazz. And when I want to be creative um, within my, my, my line of work, uh, writing a paper or something, I'm starting to venture into those types of music. That's basically what I listen to. Nice. Okay. See, we put you on the spot. I know you revealed so much. <laughs> but this has been a great conversation. We really appreciate you coming in. You know, our show is yeah. called Open Your Eyes, and we always talk about opening your mind. Yeah. Here we go. The official uh, scientific facts on the connection between music and the brain. We appreciate it so much. Thank it's you. Fun. Thank yeah. yeah. Thank we you. could go longer, but we're out of time. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and take a break, and we will be back in a few, so stay tuned.